I want to apologize in advance for my microphone quality, but I'm moving around a lot right now, and I don't have time to set up my actual microphone, so I'm using my headset. Anyway, this is an in-depth tutorial on how to do a solar array with the new logic chips. To begin, you're going to print out five of the logic memory, five of the logic processor, and then two or more of the logic readers. You will also need one sensor. The number of readers and writers that you need depends on the amount of solar panels. You really only need one reader, and then the rest are going to be writers depending on the number of solars. All of this is available on the electronics printer, and the reader and writer will come up as the logic I slash O. Once you've made your sensor, place it on the side of an iron frame like it's shown here. This way it'll track the sun's movement. It needs to be in line with the sun. Once you've placed the sensor, you're going to start cabling to wherever you're going to place your logic chips. Make sure you've left a hefty amount of space for this, at least a 2x2 two two space with the iron frames. I will later place all of my logic chips underground as it seemed the most convenient at the time, but I've also seen people put them inside of the iron frames and then cover them up, as you don't really need to mess with them later on. So now we're going to place all of the logic chips, and you're going to start with a logic reader, which is also known as the logic I slash O. You can scroll wheel to get the logic writer, but you want the logic reader. Then place down all the logic processors as logic math. Place them in the fashion shown here, in a diagonal from top left to bottom right, and the last two being min-max units. From here, place all of the memory units in line with your processing units. From here, you're going to start wiring in, and from here, you're just going to go back to where you had your sensor cable, and then line it into the logic reader on the input side. You do need to be careful as it needs to be input, not the output, otherwise you're not going to get anything. From here, start wiring the output of the logic reader to the input one side of all of the math units. From here, you're going to start wiring in the memory units, which I recommend using a lot of the 4-way and 3-way junction cables. Start wiring in the memory units to the input 2 slot on the math units and the 2 min-max units. You're going to be golden as soon as you've done this. From here, place a logic writer with the output going into the solar panel, but make sure to use a 4-way or a 3-way junction, that way you can use the solar panel's power in some way or another. In this case, you're going to run it downstairs to your logic and run it through an APC, that way you can power all of your logic with the solar panels. Make sure you also have a cable leading from the logic writer downstairs to where your other logic is placed, that way you have a way to get your logic to the writer. It's a little confusing, but the logic writer is really just taking whatever the number output is from your other logic and putting it into the solar panel as an angle. Once you have the power of your solar panel running through an APC, make sure it goes through all of the power on the math units as well as the reader. Memory units don't need a power. After that's done, go to the output of your final unit, which should be a min-max logic, and then wire it into the logic writer. Once that's done, you're going to make your life significantly easier by using the labeler. Make sure you put a battery in it, turn it on, and then rename the logic reader to sensor. Name the first math unit as x times 2. This is because you're taking the number from the logic reader and then multiplying it by 2. Name the second math unit divided by 3. The third math unit, minus 10. Now you should realize this doesn't actually do anything other than help you with namesake. Then name the first min-max unit, min, and then the second one, max. Once this is done, you're going to go through all of the memory units. I did this because it makes sense. Go to the top one, name it 2. The second one, 3. The third one, 10. And then the next one, 100. And then 0. Go into your tool belt and take out your screwdriver. Once it's in your hand, left-click on the input on the logic reader and make sure it says daylight sensor. Then on the output, you're going to make it say Sensor Solar Angle. If you've wired it correctly, you can go onto all of the math units and left click on the first input once, and it should make it red and then the previous unit. This is because it's only getting a single input from input 1, and there's nothing else it can read. Go back to the first math unit and change the output to Multiply. Change the input 2 to 2. This is because you're multiplying by 2, and we've named the memory unit 2. Go to the second math unit and change it to divide, and then change the input to, to 3. Continuing the trend, go to the third math unit and change the output to subtract, and then change it to 10. You're using 10 because if you subtracted negative 10, then it would really just be adding. On your max unit, change it to less, and then your input 2 to 0. Go to each of your memory units and increase them to the proper values. 2 should be 2, 3 should be 3, 10 should be 10, 
100 should be 100 and 0 should be 0. Once this is done, make sure you turn on all of your units by clicking the light and make sure the cable from your max unit is going to your writer units. Go back up to your solar panels and make sure the logic writer is inputting max. I personally rename my solar panels to solar 1 and solar 2. Your out variable should be vertical and then your output should be whatever solar panel it's directing into. In this case for me it was solar 2 and solar 1. Once that's done they should start automatically tilting. You can see them actually going back to zero here. The solar panels on this are rather efficient. If you run into any issues, please give me a comment or on Discord send me your save file and I'll take a look. If you're going to add a new solar panel to your array, all you need to do is add a logic writer and then from there make sure the output is your new solar panel and the output variable is vertical and that the input is obviously max. From there, it's really easy to add new solar panels. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm sorry if this seems sloppy or anything. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. Thank you.